Um, that's going to be the gauge, I think, for us because that's on supports um, on a pullback. So if that holds up here and the dollar yen probably could be a bit of a barometer for, you know, if that continues to move down, then there may well be um, a hold and, and some further upside. Pound's interesting though, isn't it? Pound's, pound's really, um, pound's doing very well at this, this morning so far. Mate, um, it appears that not only is Boris a now an improved thermometer, he's also a good barometer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can yes. use that if you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, gold, sorry, the dollar is, is weakening. Gold has just gone crazy, hasn't it? I mean, it's over 17,000 now. Yeah, look, I'm um, extremely confident that the dollar's on a big spiral down. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're on air, mate. So we better say hello to everybody and welcome them to the show. It's an unscheduled one. Well, it's really not unscheduled, I suppose, but Ash and I were considering that today would be a holiday for all and sundry, given that bank holidays are in vogue all the way around the world. But here we are, um, because yeah. apparently the US is going to open later on. Well, the, the futures are open. Uh, FTSE futures aren't open, which I think is interesting. But yeah, the futures, uh, the the American market futures are open. So yeah, I guess I guess it probably will. Well, mate, uh, we'll be here in the US session, of course, and uh, hopefully there'll be some that are, can join us in this session as well. I guess there's not too many people working around the place at the moment, so there potentially will be a few people in the room. I think um, maybe this will show more than anything why we anticipate that there won't be a heck of a lot of action going on today but that said look at the pound pounds going mm. nuts at the moment for whatever mm. reason and oil oil is fascinating too yeah yeah look i think there's a few things to be um looking for during the week can you see the uh da, 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 forex factory by any chance let's have a look at your what on, on your screen yes your screen showing it okay happy days um, so, you know, this is this is pretty much the reason why we're not expecting to see too much in terms of volume or liquidity uh, in today's, well, certainly the UK session, um, but maybe if, if we do have some traders going to work in the US today, there may be something uh, there a bit later. But uh, as I say, the, the pound is certainly not doing as I anticipate, well, maybe going as high, uh, or long, we anticipated that, but uh, what we didn't anticipate was that we would see a substantial move in this pair. Indeed, just prior to London session, I'm on the hourly chart there and we've had a little skip about 60 pips in yeah. even time. So pip a minute we're going at. If that continues to be the case, we'll be, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to- um, Pretty wealthy by the end of the year. Get paid <laughs> by, by the end of the day. Of course, uh, we did take this trade. When did we take this trade? We've got uh, we still got your Forex factory on the screen at the minute. Oh, okay. Well, maybe whilst we've got that on the screen, we better take a little bit of a look at it, shall hmm. we? Um, of course, we know that uh, most people are experiencing bank holidays today. So no news that you wouldn't think would rock the markets in any way, shape or form. Those who are trading are potentially retail traders, one would have thought. Uh, the big boy is having a day off. But, you know, that said, liquidity and, uh, and volume are not everything. Um, it would not take a whole lot, one wouldn't suspect. Uh, say, I don't know. Say um, somebody put in an order for 200,000 tonnes of prawns out of Tasmania going to China. Uh, that'll that'll move the markets in the Aussie dollar's favour. Well, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because you know, I think a lot of people um, associate volume and, and liquidity with um, with volatility, but it's absolutely the opposite. You know, if there's a, if there's a lack of um, lack of volume, then as you say, you know, it can take very very little to move mm. things around. Which is why we saw it in Bitcoin. You know, why Bitcoin moves so much, um, and why it's such a volatile uh, space to, to 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 be investing or or to be trading in. Because they, they, it doesn't have the volume that, uh, that the currency markets do. Less predictable, um, you know. Um. 
and that's that's exactly the reason why it, it's probably and i would advise uh, extreme caution if if you are going to look to trade today because those movements will come out of nowhere and mm. you, you can't predict them really can't because yep. it's not yep. normal uh, inverted comma circumstances that we're looking at so that's generally why we would advise uh, strict caution around around trading today certainly intraday intraday can be really tricky in these occasions that said um if we go back and have a look at well, well actually briefly just things that are coming up this week that could move the market and could move it substantially um look i'm a massive bear the dollar at the moment don't anticipate that anticipate that any retail sales numbers coming if they're month on month that is uh, year on year might be a bit different, but month on month, if they're coming out, which they are, on Wednesday uh, in the States, I can't anticipate that they're going to be good numbers and I can't anticipate that the dollar would rally in any way, shape or form off those. No. Maybe this Thank is where we start to see the um, the numbers, mate. Yeah, actually, you know, we, we, we've they've, they've been holding up because they've been so delayed, haven't they? But maybe this is where we start to see them coming through properly. Yes, one would expect that that's going to be the case. So I would think that those um, predictors, if you like, or assessments from the economists who, who post these are probably very conservative and we may see you know, far worse figures than that. We will see. Um, Bank of Canada, rate statements. Um, can't anticipate that's going to do too much either, to be fair. Um, I think, you know, similar to the Aussie, the, the CAD or the Bank of Canada has said pretty much that that's about it for now. Um, COVID-19 is, is just ruling the world at the moment. And I don't think uh, the central banks are going to move any anytime soon. Uh, the statements will probably be interesting. They'll be, I guess, trying to forecast what movements may well be other side of COVID-19. So that could be interesting. Uh, employment numbers on the Aussie are coming out. That might rock the boat a little bit, but, you know, employment figures coming out at the moment are not what um, you would expect a central bank to be reacting on as they would normally do because these numbers are, bad, are bound to be uh, horrendous no matter what happens. The unemployment rate, uh, this is a month-on-month -month figure, will definitely go up. Uh, on the Aussie, as it will on just about every well, it will on every every major or Western world certainly at the moment. Uh, Five point four may be conservative. Um, it's February's figure, or, or based on February February's numbers. So uh, sorry, March numbers. So you would imagine that the um, and we were fairly early to react, I suppose, in in terms of getting people out of the workforce. Uh, next month would be horrendous, but this one is probably going to be a little bit worse than 5.4, again, in my humble opinion. Whether that's enough to stem the the bullishness on the Aussie at the moment, and I'm major bull at the moment as well, uh, is yet to be seen. The unemployment claims in the US are predicted to go down from the horrendous 6.6 .6 million that we saw the week before. And, of course, that was double almost the the previous week which was three thousand uh, sorry three million something um let's hope for their sake that that is the case and the five million is a a sign of uh, some stability gee whiz it's very hard to, to see the states coming out of this anytime soon to be fair and i think they're in horrible horrible trouble because they well i'm not going to apportion blame to anyone but uh, it would appear that they were a little bit slow to react. And uh, New York, obviously, having been a horrendous situation, has only just been the tip of the iceberg from what you're led to believe. And um, there are states now starting to get into horrendous figures as well. Don't like the picture coming out of the states at the moment, I've got to say. And to top off the week, um, GDP figures coming out of China. Of course, uh, they will. That's quarterly. Quarterly, yeah, might not be as bad as expected. We will see. Anyway, that's the picture, and that's um, something. I don't know that the numbers are going to make a terrible difference to me, Ash. To be fair, the way I'm looking at the market, it's not about the numbers 
coming out unless they're you know dramatic and absolutely big misses or or big beats uh, I, mm. I don't think they're going to mean too much in this current environment to be fair yeah, it's interesting isn't it because you know i think i think the um we've had the big beats and it hasn't really made much difference so uh, i'm kind of with you on it but um it's surprising, you know, because <laughs> you would think that at some point there would be um, something that would start to shift the market around. Um, you know, some of these numbers are going to start filtering through and the market is going to pay attention. But at this stage, I mean, even even looking at the um, the S&P, I will show you. Uh, and do, do we need to put the pound trade on? Or are we, we all right? Mate, I'm not going to play, trade the pound. Uh, maybe I should just for record's sake, but yeah, I, I really don't think it's a worthwhile venture today to be placing a breakout trade. I yeah. think we're, we're more. What I, what I would if I was trading, you know, seriously at all, I would be thinking uh, burglar trades, not uh, not breakout trades. Burglar trades. Sorry for those of you who aren't aware of. I call them burglar trades because they're break-ins rather than breakouts. And what I'm anticipating is that price uh, will stay within a range pretty much today. And for that reason, I'd be looking, if I was thinking of trading, trading off the tops to the bottoms, bottoms to the tops, rather than anything else. And, you know, I think those ranges are going to be very, very tight as well. So mm -hmm. I would I would strongly advise that unless you've got an absolute BT of a, of a setup, um, you just be very cautious. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So, so no, I'm not going to trade the pound breakout trade today, mate. I think it's reckless. All right, mate. Well, in that, in that case, let me show you my screen. Um, uh, where are you? There you are. I do have some in, incredible potential trades coming. Not for today, but I think there's some real good opportunities for the week coming up. That I okay, will share. Brilliant. brilliant. Not now. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's have a look. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm looking across the board here. I'm looking at uh, I'm look, WTI fascinates me because of the OPEC deal that was done, and yet um, we are actually going in the opposite direction, um, which is um, which is unusual um, or, or surprising, maybe the the the, the best is way a, to, is to put fake, it. Fake, you reckon? ready for a big yeah game. i do to be honest i mean mm -hmm. i would have thought that uh, wci would be a fantastic um a fantastic uh trade to, to to buy now that um you know they were waiting for the opec deals to be done they said they're going to cut production by 10 percent. of course we know that there's lots of uh, problems with uh demand <clears throat> with oil but um you'd still think that you know off the back of uh, data and news that there would be something good so i think this should be on everybody's radar i mean looking at it then uh, we are down here. Looks like an inverted head and shoulders pattern is, or, or something of the type is, is forming at this lower edge here. Um, if we blow this up a little bit, we got we got some something that looks like a left shoulder. Looks like this is the head, maybe the right shoulder, um, maybe a descending triangle. This this uh, it's it's difficult to see, but we can see that this could put in a higher low here. So if it does put in the higher low. Um, and can get through the daily and, and weekly pivot. That's the key, really. If it can get through this daily and weekly pivot, I think this starts to look pretty attractive. I mean, looking at this on a four-hour, it hasn't really broken under this level um, with any uh, real confidence and, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, it hasn't held down there. But <clears throat> I guess we could wait until the end of today and see what happens because if this bar ends up closing above this line again, around about the 2370 level, then, um, then that's actually going to look pretty good for oil. It looks like it will be holding that particular area. If it doesn't, then it could, I suppose, change the, um, the thoughts on it. But there's a little trend line there as well. It looks like that's the area that we should, we should be looking at uh, for it to bounce off again. So the uh, 22, maybe 2210 uh, to, to come down and, and bounce again. But we will need to see this turn around. It, it wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't have thought any point in trading it long here just because it would then have broken down this, uh, this little level of support. So if it closes down here, not so good. But if it can bounce from here, and get back up. I think this area could be um, could be something of uh, of interest. But the you know, you know, I, mate, I, I didn't um, chip in last night in the um, the Sunday market preview show, but but I probably yeah. should have. And yeah, we're, we're really only looking at one side of the equation if we if we're talking about um, what OPEC has come if they've come to that mm. agreement that they're going to 
um, suppressed supply, if you like. Yep. Uh, yep. One of a better word. Yep. Supply is only one part of the equation. It always has been, always yes. will. Yeah. Um, and, and it's the demand thing that really is the issue here for yes. me. Now, yeah, I totally okay, agree. Let, let's, let's cull the supply or cut the supply back. Yes. But where's the demand coming from anytime soon? Or well, increased the, I, I guess this is where the Chinese step in. And, and I don't really know enough about that particular order. Um, to know how much uh, demand that the Chinese are putting in, but mm. it seems like they are stockpiling. So, if uh, if that's the case, then then maybe some some um, something happens there. But you, you you know, looking at this chart, it suggests that there's not enough demand there from the, the Chinese, and we probably need another player to come in and start stockpiling for this to actually start moving uh, back up again. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, was was that uh, I didn't because obviously I wasn't at the meeting yesterday. So was the um, the general consensus that we should be shorting oil? Oh, no, um, definitely not. I, right. I think, you know, we're still on the same page as they, well, I'll, I'll call them the oil, our oil experts. And, you know, yeah. I, I defer to them. Absolutely. I, I have absolutely no experience in trading oil whatsoever. Yeah. But to me, um, in this situation, I, I still want to see that demand go up. And I think the, the China demand issue was kind of dealt with the week before last wasn't it that's that's why we saw yes. the rally yes yes so, I, I, yeah you, you're right and I, and I suppose this is the this is the key aspect of uh, of trading with either just fundamentals or just technicals um in very similar to, to supply and demand i think that when they when they can work hand in hand then you have a pretty powerful position that you're trading in and there's no doubt that right now um, what you're saying is is probably right, and and that's probably the way the market uh, appears to be perceiving it because it's selling off. But I suppose what we're really looking for is to see whether this picture does change. Now, as I say, it needs to get through this daily and weekly pivot, and if it does, then maybe then we do start to hear that there's something else uh, that, that's going on. Maybe we do start to set, you know get the filter in of the of the Chinese numbers. Uh, difficult day to suggest uh, we're going to get some genuine yeah, direction. Yes. Um, so today probably isn't the day to be looking for it, or, or maybe difficult, difficult session. You know, more than anything else, this is the, the uh, you know, I've not witnessed a um, a, um, a a session in the UK this sleepy since the last bank holiday. So it's you know, everybody's everybody's away from their desk effectively, and it's going to take a bit of a jolt probably to get the market moving but the orders haven't yet gone in from the big guns um and until they sit down at their desk and, and we we really hear what uh, what they are doing we don't really know what's going on with the with the oil story so um the demand might be there might be enough demand to at least push this up to 29 or, or at least push this up to the monthly pivot and i guess that's the thing isn't it because everything's relative the demand isn't there uh, on the longer term, on the bigger picture with oil, for, for you know, to get us back up to hundred dollars a barrel, but will it get us up to thirty dollars a barrel? Could do. So I, I guess this is where we need to wait for the technicals to turn around and, and show us the way, um, because at this stage they're not. You know, but I, I would not be looking for the short here because of that OPEC cut. But equally, the long isn't on on the table um, right now because the, the technicals don't add up. So I'd want the two to marry, and, and from what. Um, from what I would assume from a, a cut in, in oil production, um, we should be seeing <clears throat> higher prices, but, um, but there might be more to this story than I've, uh, I've discovered at this stage. Yeah, I don't know enough about it, mate. Definitely don't know enough about it. But as I said, when I look at this logically, um, yeah. I, I need to see the other side of the equation before I'm, yeah. a, before yeah. I'm a buyer of Oh. I'm with you on that as well. Mm. But looking at um, looking at some of these other uh, markets and charts as well. This is the S and P, and the S and P is the uh, is the the, the I, I guess the one of interest because um, in actual fact, let's have a look at it on the what's this? Uh, let's have a look on the four hour. That'll do us. Um, the S and P is the one of interest because you know the, the, we can't read the FTSE and, the, and they have been pretty much a, a mirror image of each other anyway in the way they've been rallying. Support down here resistance here resistance got broken and retested off the monthly pivot and it's gone up another leg now it's come back now this is the this is why i think the s p is quite interesting because all we all, where we are is exactly where um pullbacks will be um of, uh, of of new interest you know we did see resistance there it continued here for a period very very small bits of resistance but it bounced up off the daily pivot 
So real, realistically, this is still in an uptrend, you know, very much in an uptrend. And it, and it will be probably right in, until the monthly pivot. Um, it might uh, it might be a, under question after it breaks down, the, you know, if it breaks down the weekly, um, particularly because of uh, trend lines. But if the S&P holds today and can hold today, then I suspect we probably are going to be taking a leg higher with the FTSE as well. So that looks to me like um, like the short term um, position here it looks like a, a triangle pattern, uh, an ascending triangle pattern that we were um, starting to form, and we've 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 broken out of that. I'm not sure whether we've done the measured move on the triangle yet. I think it might be just a little bit further to go. Um, but as you said, you know what what is going to be? Yeah, it looks like a. Looks like there's um, a little bit higher to go on the S and P. Not too much, to be honest, but yeah, it does look like there's there's just a little bit of a stretch if the triangle is to play out and if that triangle's there. But I think significantly, <clears throat> the um, the price has come back testing this area and, it, and it's holding at the minute. It's low, very very low volume, but it's holding at the minute. But anything up to the weekly pivot, I think, is um, is a point of interest for upside um, on the S and P. And I think that that's the way people will be playing it. And if there's a drift in price um, up until Oh, no, that's probably not going to happen, actually. I was going to say up until this line's tested, but but that would lead us all the way down to the monthly pivot, which is going to change the picture uh, quite significantly. So for me, S&P has to stay above the um, the weekly pivot. And if it does, then I think we're still probably looking for the long side on the S&P. Um, just checking these a, a fib out on this as well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 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 twenty six seventy. Uh, fibs fibs a bit sloppy, but um, but yeah, breaking down this weekly pivot, I I uh, what I'd be looking for at that stage. I'm still bearish, you know. I'm still bearish to the uh, the, the the markets. Um, but while it's doing what it's doing, you know, we uh, we don't have a, uh, a uh, an opportunity to sell just yet. I know we're under this daily pivot, but what I would want to see if I was going to sell is probably the market come down. And maybe it's, it's a bit of a mess today because of the way the pivots are, but maybe maybe be bouncing somewhere like that might might even come down. You know, if 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 we are going to get some some sort of negative price action, it may be even come down to the the monthly pivot. Now this this will be a, a you know um, a, a really strong bounce point because it lo it will look at the monthly pivot that it's getting very close to the trend line as well. So I suppose if it came back up again and created what would look then like some some sort of head and shoulders on the um, on the four hourly, then I might be interested in picking it up somewhere along here and seeing if we can get through and come down. Um, I just get that feeling, mate, that if, if it does start to fall again, uh, yeah. there won't be any retracement quickly. We'll, we'll yeah, be straight well, down to test that low. You could be right, low. mate. Yeah, well, rather than bouncing here. I think so. Yeah, well, I suppose maybe maybe it'll depend on if it happens today because if it happens today on light volume, there will be yeah, a true. chance of a rally, mm. um, and and maybe the rally would just come up to the um, the weekly pivot at that point and then start to fail, but. Um, but at the minute, it's still bullish. You know, it's at, at this stage, mm -hmm. we're still looking yeah. for the long. Um, but it, but it, I totally see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm you know, I I'm waiting for the bearish side of of the market to to appear again. Um, but at the minute, it's it's just holding on. So I'd want to see it come down and then see if you know, as you say, if there's no bounce, we might just have to put in an order down here. But um, but that wouldn't be my preferred way to trade it um, if I could avoid it. Um, which I probably would have to avoid it. I think that would be an awful way to try and get into this market. Um, but if we could get some sort of bounce and we can look around about the uh, the weekly pivot, then um, then I think we might well have a trade on at that particular point. But you know, it, it's it's quiet today, and um, and price action is probably going to be quite hard to come by by the looks of uh, what's going on right now. We'll see what happens in the U.S. session, mate. But but you know, today this is really about getting everybody's house in order and making sure you're prepared for the week. You know, this yeah, is the Good, good days, good days to um, good days to get your journal and, and all that kind of thing done, isn't it, mate? It's, it certainly is. A wonderful day to get your journal done. One day I'll do that. <clears throat> <Pardon me. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, yeah, we, we we do need to talk about the journal. Maybe maybe we do start to discuss that. I don't know how we're going to get a session on that, but um, I've been working on um, uh, the journal a bit more this weekend uh, just to kind of bring well, to everybody. Well, maybe if, if you want to hang around after the half hour, we might spend 10 minutes on that and, uh, and at least set it up and start putting a couple of entries in there. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. Okay, now you put me under extreme pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, but we, we can have a look. We, we can have a look. Because the thing is, um, I suppose if people are going to improve, if the, if the, the traders in the room are going to improve, it's really important to try and it's track. It's super important. When you're just you know, starting out, there's, there's nothing more valuable. Yeah. Yeah, because it really, um, it really um, allows you to track your um, your progress to the point that you can um, um, change, you know, and 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 get in amongst and, and start to um, start to really understand your your strategy. And I th I think that's the key for a lot of people that you know they just don't understand the strategy very well. I've just popped into the room, so I'm just having a look at some of these questions. Um, John, how you doing, Kumar? Lewis, Raymond, Helen, um, Uthea, Faye, Alexis. Who else we got in there? Fad as well. How you do, how you guys doing? Sorry, just just popped into the room and, and seeing the guys chat. Um, happy Easter to you guys too. Uh, <laughs> Alexis had the hamburger. Maybe maybe your uh, your break in trade should be called the That's hamburger. That's my break in trade. Yeah. <laughs> your break in trade. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I so... might, okay, I'll, I'll call it the hamburger. Why not? Like, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you've Helen's been journaling. Um, deleted because Easter. You mean you just Easter. stopped? Stopped entering because of Easter. Stopped trading because of Easter. Yes, maybe. we've got to start the journal, Faye. We've got to start the journal. It's, you know, I mean, I was, I was, so I was updating mine over the weekend. Um, yes, it is slow. It is slow. And a good day, you say, good day to kind of get in and do your, do your background stuff. No problem. You know what? It's only, it's still early in, in, in April for us to get started again, but we do need to do that. Um, we'll do let's it. have a look. Fans Thomas asking we'll just, it. we'll start in the next half hour. Start in the next half hour. Okay. Um, so just to look at this, ETFs are fine to trade. Yeah. If um, if you, it depends on the market to be fair, but um, but yeah, it's good to trade the ETF. Certainly in gold, I would have thought right now. Um, but uh, but your books are full. I put the trades on Friday, then deleted. Oh, I see. You put the trades on Friday. Yeah, I think that's okay. That's okay to get out over the weekend. It was a long weekend, so it could have been a bit hairy. Um, yeah, look, I've got know. a confession to make. Um, in my, actually, I don't know where I posted it. Probably in the um, in the Telegram group that I was going to close trades over the weekend. What I did was Friday night I moved all my stops to either plus whatever I was, or entry on those that only hit TP one. And uh, with the full intention of, and the market to close at seven o'clock here, seven a.m. Uh, in Australia. So my full intention was to get up on Saturday morning, and I posted as much and close every trade that I was in. And I got up on Saturday morning, went down, made a cup of tea. By the time I got back, um, what I hadn't taken into consideration was that. The brokers now, uh, at least the brokers I'm trading with, because I won't say just because I complained, <laughs> but because a lot of people complain that there were at close and open of sessions or, or the overnight thing, right? Uh, they were gapping the market all the time. And I complained about that. And so did many others, I'm sure. And they changed that. So their way to deal with that was to close the market two minutes before and not open it until two minutes after the actual market, the interbank market, had actually gone through the process of changeover. So what that meant was that when I came back with two minutes to go before the close or, or the changeover, I couldn't change. I couldn't couldn't get out of my trades, so I held 
I think I'm in six trades at the moment, all six trades over the weekend, and uh, fortunately no damage done. Um, but they're pretty much all where they were, apart from this one, which is pound US dollar, which is um, which is now, as you can see, gone okay already through DR3 today. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy mm. stuff. But, you know, that's what the illiquid market can produce, as we've discussed. Doesn't take a whole lot of... Um, when I say doesn't take a whole lot, you and I, Ash, couldn't combine our funds and and buy the pound right now and make it move too much. But <laughs> no, no. A, a massive order out of China into, uh, well, sorry, out of anywhere into anywhere can move the market if it was a, a big enough order. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still talking multi millions and billions of dollars. I'm not talking about a few uh, loose changes into that. So yeah, it, it can happen, but unless those things are about, and they're unpredictable, and that's why it's a little bit dodgy to trade in these days. This euro euro yen looks interesting. They're just uh, seeing. What do you got uh, on euro? Um, Raymond was just talking about this euro yen was profitable today, and before he realised it's a demo account, but might still have an opportunity on this one. I mean, it's, it looks like a pretty good. Um, price action chart let me just have a look at this on i haven't had a chart open all day until you know half hour before this session so i've really got no idea what's going on well no i mean it's trading. it looks pretty good it looks pretty good for some further downside if, if we look at this on the on the longer term time frames then um I, I, i'm not sure about the level is a problem um i'd like it a little bit <clears throat> a little bit higher than where we are right now. Just I think we might miss something, but we'll, we'll, let's see if we have missed it. But this is the daily, and the daily, the daily looks like it is. It's on this area of resistance here, and we're starting to see some evidence of that. Um, not all that clean. It's not the best area, you know. When when resistance, when an area of resistance is is a few back. Um, it, it, it makes it it makes it a lot trickier, really, to kind of like find where the swing is. It would have been much better if if there was um, some something along here, but because it just went um, went so far to the downside, now it's popping up again. It's it's not going to be that easy to find out where that resistance is. But it looks like this this area is is providing something of uh, of some resistance anyway. But it's I suppose it's the setup charts, which is going to make it um, slightly more difficult. But the setup chart certainly looks like uh, it's taken out a pattern here. When we look at this on a uh, on a four hour, then there is this um, ascending triangle on the on the four hour here, and it's taken that area out. So pushing back into I would have thought one eighteen forty. If it pushes back up to here, then I'm, I might be interested in this. You know, if it can come and test the level again, then uh, then that might be of interest. But I, I, even down here, you know, what what we've got really down here is a load of pivots, but those pivots don't seem to have. I mean, I might be wrong on it. Um, we've got, in fact, no, no. The the uh, there is one pivot down here, the weekly pivot, but the daily and monthly around about this uh, this eighteen one eighteen fifty one eighteen. 65 that um that to me would be pretty interesting i think if if uh, if the if the euro yen came up here and popped up in, into this area then yes i think we should be should be looking for this for for a trade i mean it is difficult because of um because of the uh the the, the lack of <clears throat> volume in the market your your um your Forex factory looks different to mine, Jeff, and I don't know why. Uh, probably got a different filter on, have I? Yeah, I haven't got any filters on mine. So when I look, when I open mine up, I haven't got any filters there. But if I go to up next, I'm only getting this. I don't know why you've got the American stuff today, right? I haven't. No, there's nothing, nothing oh. on you. No. Oh, okay, fine. So you got the same as me here. Okay, so maybe you were yep. looking at uh, the week <clears throat> rather than the day. Sorry, that's my my mistake. Okay, so tomorrow we got trade balance from China. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, the retail sales and and all that kind of stuff, which will make a difference if there's some other story. I, I would suspect uh, Australia quiet. 
unemployment claims uh, after being half a million. They're looking for that to come down a bit. Uh, GDP from, okay, so this will be an interesting one. The GDP from China, I think it's going to be a really interesting one. No, so it looks like we're not we're not really uh, looking until Friday before we get a significant number. Now that's not to say that the market won't move before then, but this is going to give us a proper read on where we where we start to stand. They're expecting a minus um, a minus six percent, which would put us uh, in an area that uh, we have not been in um, for at least as far back as this data goes. You know, the, the, the worst we've had is 6%. So they're looking at minus 6%. So that GDP comes out, then expect a, an absolute spanking in the market. Um, and this is what makes this difficult, doesn't it, Jeff? And, and you know, I, yeah, I, look, it does, but it's got to be expected. That's the, that's the thing that I can't kind of get my head around. Um, we all know it's going to be a shit number. Yeah. Yeah. So is the market really tank on it? I don't know. It's a tough one. It's really a tough one to call. Well, it, I mean, it, it it should it should uh, it should tank on it, but but as you say, it is a tough one to call. What we've just seen with um, with OPEC and WCI is uh, is price action, which is opposite to what most people would have thought would have happened. So you can never be sure. But what we can be is prepared if the, if a technical setup appears to the downside. Um, in the uh, in the stock markets, then we can start to look for shorts. So at this stage, we're still, you know, waiting for that to turn around and and uh, and, and make themselves known. But um, but I think we can look for shorts this this week. Uh, that that looks pretty good for me. You know, I, I'd be I'd be more than happy to suggest that um, that there could be some participants that would say, all right, a China GDP is a big enough um, um, event for this market to start moving down again. And who knows, mate, we might get a negative 10% uh, on the GDP. And if that's the case, mm. we're definitely coming down. Um, you know, so it, it, it may well be a relative number and it may, we might start to see relativity of, of you know, of, um, of reaction. But, um, but the, you know, the, 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 the S&P hasn't quite tested areas that, um, that it could eventually get to when we look at it. And, Look at it on a daily. Could could uh, do we coming up just a little bit further on the daily? Maybe even up to that point. I don't know. But it's, it's a pretty screaming V-shaped recoveries and all the rest of it. Yes. And, yeah. And yeah. recovered a lot further than I'd anticipated. I've got to say. Yeah. Same with the FTSE. You know, the FTSE could come up and and close this gap. And to be honest, if it did, as I said before, I'd be a lot more comfortable uh, looking for downside because when that gap is done, then it's good to go. Um, and at least come and test down these lows again. So I'd be much more comfortable if it did this, because otherwise, every uh, sell signal that comes, um, that's taken, uh, uh, there's still going to be a doubt whether it could just turn around, you know, sort of, you know, carve out another sort of like bottom area and start to push up again um, until we see this gap gap uh, closed in the market. And the, the other thing is what the valuations are going to be. You know, where is fair value? in uh, in the stock market it may well exist uh, somewhere around here there's gonna be a lot of trawling through for uh, for economists uh, to find out where fair value is to understand what the um you know the what 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 the price to earnings ratios the new ones should be um you know regardless of anything else fear will drive the market down fast but uh, i suppose absolute maths will, will will get it into a place where it should be you know eventually where it should be bubbling along and um uh, you know, we're we're far from finding that place yet. But yeah, then, interesting you know, psychological game going on 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 here. Um, as yeah. soon as it starts to sell off, people go, "Oh my God, we're, we we bought too early. Let's get out of here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Well, that's that's that, mate. Now you wanted to um, get to the journal this this half hour, so let's have a look at that. Well, I better have a look at some currencies first. Do you think? Oh yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> it sounded like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, where should I go first? Uh, that one, I think. Earnings, yes, it should do. Um, it should um, affect the the S and P, uh, Mike. Absolutely. You know, earnings seasons. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal when you when you kind of get earnings season. It can really switch things around. So yes, depending on what those numbers come out like, it could really, really help. 
Okay, those of you who didn't jump into the um, pound Aussie trade that we called when here, what's that, two weeks ago? Not even, a week and a half ago, uh, trading this bar here. Look, I think you're going to get an excellent opportunity to get back into this or into this if you haven't been in it already. I remain committed to this being a, <clears throat> pardon me, a uh, reversal and based primarily on what the Aussie is, in my opinion, likely to do in the upcoming weeks and months, based on coming out of coronavirus. Well, there's a whole stack of reasons why I think the Aussie can rally at the moment, but it's, it's based primarily on around coronavirus and the fact that the sweep, if you like, of, of uh, economic recovery starts in China. Which I mean, this is, is the thing, mate. What, what, what about that? I mean, you know, poor, poor GDP numbers out of China. Where does that leave us with the Aussie? Uh, look, we're going to get poor GDP numbers out of China. I have no doubt about that. But how poor is the question? Um, yeah. And I, I honestly believe that everybody's factoring in bad numbers everywhere. So I, I just don't think if it's not completely and absolutely blown out of any sense of reality uh, that it will make a, a huge difference to be fair. And I think that there are more reasons other than just that, but as I said, yeah. led by that, uh, that the Aussie will rally. Yeah. And, and I don't think what, whatever that GDP number is, if there is a market reaction, it will only be fleeting. And, and then we'll come back to tours as soon as the market really... There, there will probably be a knee-jerk reaction. There always is uh, to a, a really bad number. But I don't know that it will last. So that's kind of the position I'm taking on that. But what I am seeing here is this, this uh, level here that we suggested you take a good portion of your money off the table at was breached and um, breached substantially. Now we're getting a retest of that law, potentially getting a retest of that level. And I think that's going to provide an excellent selling opportunity. I would probably like to have seen the weekly pivot come down and join that level, uh, just to give a little bit more weight to the, uh, to the resistance. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I'll, and as I said, I was, I'm still in this trade. Shouldn't be, I should have closed it over the weekend, but I am still in this trade. And I will be definitely scaling in here as soon as I see the signs of this and probably as early as tomorrow, as soon as I see the signs of this uh, being repelled by this level, which is around about 197.45 mark. You know, I've been speaking about that level for two weeks. So uh, that is promising if you aren't in this trade, if you choose to uh, share my pessimism on Pound Aussie, then I think today... Uh, is not the day, but tomorrow what may well be uh, where you might find a nice short on that one. Boris Johnson is very, very interesting. And uh, Ash and I were talking off air and I made some stupid comment. I can't even remember what it was, but it was about um, the pound, really. And I'll go there now and have a look at that because you guys should should be in the long on the pound that we took on, when was that, Thursday? I think we took this on Thursday. Maybe Wednesday, although it looks like... It was, it was something, something about him being a barometer. I mean, that was the, the last bit, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I did say that he's not only been experiencing uh, being a thermometer, but he's now a barometer. So that was a, <laughs> yeah. a little bit crass, uh, I think. But obviously the good news is he's up on his feet. And, uh, and I saw him doing a... A press conferencey type thing, so he's obviously feeling a whole lot better than he was. Oh and, no, he is, mate. He's yeah, he's almost he's, he's always back words, to his yeah. He uh, he nearly well, he was staring, you know, that big white tunnel or yes, that big white light fair in the face. So <clears throat> yeah, interesting, very very interesting. So that uh, that appears to avoid the, um, and it's probably not the only reason, but it, it appears to avoid the stocks of pound versus the US dollar. And that, of course, is good news for you guys who took this trade with uh, with us. I, I, and I can't remember what day it was, to be absolutely fair. What did I trade it on? Four-hour chart? Looks like I got in 
break and retest or something like that here. Where's the entry here? Ah, there it is. Yeah, I see it now. Double cross of the monthly pivot. There you go. Uh, so that was when last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no, today's Monday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Last Tuesday, we got into that trade. It's taken the longest time to get going, I've got to say, but now that it has cleared this resistance area, it doesn't look too dusty, I've got to say. And the next take profit level is at 125.67, as I've got it there. Uh, it may, you could be excused for taking profit at this point if you wish. Um, I'm free trading this because I've got my stops at entry. Um, so I, I think I'll just let this rip and, and hit the levels as they appear. Unless, of course, I see something dramatic in the meantime. Am I a long-term bull? Uh, well, I don't have to be. I just have to follow what's going on. The the obvious level here to take profit is probably a little bit below. In fact, it's probably where we are right now if you trade the open and close of candles uh, as your resistance levels. But I, I think this is also a breakout level. So I'm willing to go through there and, uh, and take the profit there at the highs. And then my next probably exit point is here. Uh, and then, it, then I'll be looking for a decent retracement. Maybe we can get back in. Uh, but I'm I'm more than satisfied with what we've got at the moment. So let's just uh, let's just let it run. Euro Aussie um, is in pretty much exactly the same boat. The next take profit level on Euro Aussie is here, one seventy one fifteen, as I've got it. Uh, we got into this one just a little bit later than I would have liked, but. Um, yeah, still in a good posse. We've still got a, a very nice profit going here on Euro Aussie, and I expect that we'll get down to this level 165 or something or other. Once, let's call it 166, shall we? Uh, so I'm still anticipating that as probably the major get out area. Um, if it bounces off here, then there'll probably be another opportunity to trade it if you wanted to trade back into this longer term range that's been going on. Uh, for quite some time. Um, but if you have a look at the bigger picture, maybe we need to leave something open here. This is a massive, massive opportunity to uh, pile on a truckload of pips here. If this goes the way of the ascending channel and, you know, uh, <laughs> that's pretty much how I trade things. I trade from the top to the bottom, bottom to the top. And this really does look an opportunity. I've got to say, we're all we're already deep in profit. I can't remember how many pips, about five, six hundred and fifty or something like that. So that is where was our entry? At 177.30 ish, something like that. So for the risk that we took, which I think was a hundred pips, but I'm not sure. I'll check on that. 2,000 odd pips. Um, maybe a little bit less than that, but in the vicinity of 2,000 pips, I reckon is available on this trade. If uh, we can, if we can hang on that long, I, I think there's even some scaling opportunities at the levels that I've mentioned. If they break those levels, go back and retest them. Maybe a scale in there. If they break this level, go back and retest it. Definitely a scale in there. And the potential for massive profit is really, really on the cards here. So I, I really do like that trade. Uh, what else have we got going? Cad Swissy. Yeah, look, some of you may still be in that trade, not 100% sure, but we have now hit the top of this range. We traded this bar I'm on the daily chart. Traded this bar here, I think, uh, for, yes, that, that looks familiar. And we've been in that one now for nearly two weeks as well. I like the fact that we haven't come back below the monthly pivot and now the weekly pivot has come up to join that. But I don't like, well, when I say I don't like, um, we're free trading this and, and well in profit. So uh, it really is not going to be the end of the world if this does as you would expect it would do and come down now and, and retest the bottom of that channel. The one thing that I would take note of here is that this does look very much like a flag pattern to me on the previous 
momentum and slash trend, if you like, which is down, uh, that has a very high propensity to break to the downside. So this could well continue in a, and it's hard to call this a trend from here, um, but very, very similar to Aussie Swiss that we traded as this break, uh, as a breakout only uh, three, four weeks ago. Look at the gap on this. <laughs> There's just a massive chasm underneath this. So it's very, very difficult to say, okay, we've got a level down here where this will turn around. Uh, absolutely massive chasm here. We've come back and retested this, this breakout area. That, that was the last line of defense. There's nothing else. There really is nothing else. And of course, the decoupling of uh, the euro to the Swissy back here in 2014, which pr produced that bar, uh, has yet to be tested. Uh, some would say that is unlikely to be tested ever again. But, you know, that's what highs and lows are for. That's what we do with them. We, we test them at, at some stage. Uh, so I'm not suggesting that that's going to happen anytime soon. But uh, at this point in time, you know, I'm more than happy to have taken the profit that we've taken. If it does break out and we get a little bit of a bonus, then happy days. Uh, if it doesn't, then I'm looking for a break of the pivots here daily pivot week and monthly pivot, sorry, all the pivots, if you like, uh, the three pivots, if we broke here and came back and retested those, put in a lower high, uh, I'd definitely change polarity and be a bear. And, and as I say, there's a massive chasm underneath this. So I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be too averse to taking a, a big portion of that if it's available. The others, um, I, I'm a bit iffy on the yen, I've got to say. The news out of Japan last week that Shinzo Abe was you know, pleading for cash doesn't really fill me full of confidence with the yen. Uh, in fact, probably the reverse of that. But it's the Aussie story that, that really grabs me. And uh, as I said, for the last few weeks, I've been singing its praises because of the situation I felt was unfolding. Uh, we are at, <clears throat> pardon me, the point of turn or we were at the point of turnaround and um, I've managed to grab that not on Aussie US dollar but as those last two trades that I showed you pound Aussie and euro Aussie were very much a part of the Aussie strength scenario or the Aussie strength story as I saw it uh, look I, I'm just a buy by any dip here really uh, if, if you get price coming back to a support level and this one looks really obvious, the weekly pivot in the first instance and a breakout area. I'd definitely be looking to pick up along in that particular scenario if that were to be the case on Aussie Yen. Aussie Swissy um, looks exactly the same. Uh, again, looking for a weekly pivot bounce there. Aussie CAD, a little bit more tricky, but you can see it's going to be exactly the same story on every one of these currency pairs that I'm talking about. This is Aussie Kiwi. Uh, a retracement back to the, pardon me, the weekly pivot does get me excited. Aussie dollar, um, I, I avoided trading Aussie dollar for quite some time because I wasn't exactly sure what the US dollar was about to do. But now I'm really confident that uh, the US dollar is in strife. And uh, again, I'm a buyer of Aussie US dollar, but I want to see these retracements first. May not get the opportunity, um, but we'll see what today brings. If today was to bring us back there, gee, I'd be super happy to get in along. Let's talk. Let's talk. Um, what do they call these things? <laughs> journals, shall we? I hopefully you've got my journal yeah. up. Yeah, you do. Days are there, but and, yeah, yeah. And there you go. If you can make sense of all of that data on there, then well done. You've got better eyes than I have. Ash, can you? Call, I wonder, can you call these out to me? We'll fill a couple of these in. Um, yeah. If we, it might be a bit tough actually because you haven't got the same charts as well. But if you can go to the pound US dollar, yeah, back to the sixth of the fourth, yep, and you probably can't tell me the entry. But if you go to the nine o'clock bar. Yes. On the hourly chart. Maybe we should do this. Can we do this as a split screen? Don't know that we uh, can. Well, we're both in. Yeah. Yeah, we can. Can we? 
Yeah, How do we do that? Uh, hold on a minute. Can we? Uh, one second. Uh, do, 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 do. Don't want that. Um... Ah, maybe it's different on this. Let's have a look here. Mm, should be able to view options. Don't know. I'm probably asking you to do that. Maybe the not. Maybe not. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe, uh, I think you can on a webinar, but not on this. Yeah, not on the meeting. Okay. All right. What we'll do is um, we'll do it all on my chart and I'll show you how to do this, guys, um, in retrospect. And then you can do it ongoing in a forward manner. What we're planning on doing, and I'll catch this up. I don't know if it's going to be through the week, but maybe through next weekend. Although I've got a yeah, if we go for at least one entry, Jeff, just to, you know, just so we, we've got it in there. Yeah. And then when you catch it up, then um, just so everybody knows what they're doing with it. Right. So the 6th of the 4th was the first one. Is that right? Well, that's, that's what you said, yeah. Month. Is that what I said? Yep. Yeah. All right. So we go to the 6th of the 4th. We go to the hourly chart and we go to the 9 o'clock bar. Or if you've got a different broker and a different time setting, then you need to go to the last candle prior to London session. In my case, that's the nine o'clock bar, which is that bar there, right? Um, put your white line on it and then go back two bars before it. So you've got that bar, that bar, and that bar. They're the three bars around which we base this trade. So that's the range of the what I call pre-London Open session, last three hours prior to London Open. So I, I now know that that's where we entered the market, 15 pips above the high of that bar, which was, if we get the high of that bar, the entry would have been at 1.2290. So I can just very, very quickly go back to there and go, it was a buy. Entry was 1.2290. Stop loss would have been, there is my, the bottom of my range would have been 10 pips below there. So 1.2205. These numbers come back to you very, very readily, don't they? Because oh, I remember those numbers, 1.2205. And of course, we all know that um, I remind the elephant. So there's no surprise there. The exit. Now, uh, if you've got your journal in front of you, you'll know, not your journal. Well, yes, your MT4 journal, you'll know exactly what that is. You simply have to go there. In fact, you can probably find those. You, know, you may not find the, the uh, stop loss on the first one, but um, now we need to go to the 15 minute chart because we trail on the 15 minute bars. Don't forget. We go back to the sixth. Oh, where have I gone? Ah, la, 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 la. There we go. So there's our entry level. There's our entry bar. And we trail two buying bars. So the stop loss is pretty much bang on our entry. As you can see, just underneath that bar. It wasn't exact. I think we made one or two pips out of this from memory. Um, but we trailed our stop as soon as we got two buying bars after entry, our stop loss moves to there. And of course that was hit the, the trailing stop loss. So let's say that was, uh, exit was 1.2294, right? 1.2294 and your risk percentage. So you went into this trade, let's say we we're trading this at 1%. Now, I, I did see that question on Thursday. Now, please don't trade this at 1%. Uh, that is not kosher because this is in beta test mode. It was a win. So we just record the fact that it was a win. Then the win percentage. So the percentage will be based on the risk that you took in terms of pips here. 1.2290 versus 1.2205. So 85 pips of risk, right? I haven't got a calculator in front of me. 
Ash, if you can um, bring up a calculator, that would be awesome. Yeah, no, no problem. So the risk was 85 pips. The reward was four. So what we need to do is we need to divide four by 85. Yep. And that result will be 0. 0.00 something. Point zero, yeah, point zero zero four seven. Right, I so said we'll call that point zero zero five, shall we? Yep. So that is the result of that trade. Now, to my mind, you made four pips, and some people will just say, okay, I won four pips. To me, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't give you a, a true indication of how you're rolling. It tells you how many pips you are in front. But unless you're using exactly the same lot size on every single trade, and I wouldn't recommend that to anybody, but unless you're using exactly the same lot size on every single trade that you take, that pip count doesn't give you a good indication of how you're traveling at all. No, no, it doesn't. Because you might have risked a thousand pips to make four. You might have risked two pips to make four big difference yeah so this is what you need to know this you need to know this number yes you can look at your account but you need to know the percentage of win that you are taking on any given trade so if it's continually going to be 0 0.005 you might as well give that the flick and some would say at least it's a winner. Okay, I'll agree with that. But if it's getting into, you know, the the point fives and the 1.5s and the 2.5s and the 3.5s, and sometimes you might be very fortunate and get five, six, seven, you know, these are the sort of things that can tell you a whole lot about what's happening over here about this this one in particular is that worth trading on that particular trade and you'll get an indication moving forward and you can color these things you know wins a lot whatever you, you can play around with this whatever you want to do with it to be fair and there are probably many more columns that you can add moving down the track but to me this is the most in, important apart from this one take an image you know take a screenshot of the trade as well and put little comments on your on your chart. Let's, for instance, go back here and say, um, okay, we we know that we ended here, but we might have had, and it looks like we did have, uh, we did have a quiet Asia session. You might like to note that quiet Asia session. market rallied last few minutes thanks wesley last few minutes of i won't call it european session because a lot of people don't get that of uh let's call it asia session So if you've got that noted on your chart somewhere, you, you've immediately got a reference point and you can then go and say, well, was that circumstance the same this day or that day as it was then? And if it was, does that really make a difference to what I should be doing? Does it mean I need to reduce this based on what that market was doing beforehand? And you'll start to get a picture by this number as to whether that's important or otherwise and you might want to put a little comment in there as well but, but there's many many things you can you can use and, and we will discuss this going forward as well as to yeah. what we feel is important to uh, maybe uh, that particular day maybe uh, donald trump tweeted something two minutes before or after these things are important because they're anomalies and it's the anomalies that you want to look for uh, because that can can skew your your numbers quite dramatically. 
Um, so, you know, that number there is really important to me. Pips won and lost don't mean jack to me. They really don't. Yeah, the yeah. Um, we got um, just a few just a few comments in here. The, the, the most important thing uh, with this, everyone, is that you start and then and then we can sort of uh, clean things yeah, up. True. Um, Ravinda, we'll have a look at that in one moment with the eight uh, with the head and shoulders on the uh, on the pound. Um, the crystal, your demo, the, the account history is where you should find you don't you, the demo doesn't have a history anymore okay if you can only see ongoing trades then at least note those down and then you can start from here noting those down live phase asking win percentages exit minus enter over what oh sorry uh question okay the win percentage is whatever <clears throat> pardon me is your exit right sorry your stop loss if you're going long, taken away from your entry, in other words, your entry minus your stop loss if you're going long, which in this case was 85 pips, versus the difference between your entry and exit, which was four pips. So in other words, your profit, which was four pips, divided by your risk, which was 85 pips. So that, that gives you that number there. And no MT4 doesn't give you that win percentage, guys. Um, yes, you can look at your your um, MT4, but does that give you this image? Does it give you the comment that you had on your chart at the time? Does it give you, you know, your real progress? Does it give you this, your win percentage versus your loss percentage? which is another important number. You know, if you're, if you're winning 50% of the time and losing 50% of the time, yet this number here, uh, sorry, this number, this number here, I think I haven't got the win-loss ratio in there. I need to have that, right? Uh, so there's another one. We need to have win-loss ratio, which means the amount of wins versus the amount of losses. Um, it doesn't tell you that. The MT4 doesn't tell you that. But if you the other, you so the other, you, the four, other, you, so had, you had you had four. Uh, no, it's okay, mate. You, so it was a four pin, a four pip um, win, and it was an eighty-five pip stop loss. Yep. Um, so I, I maybe what Faye's asking is, so if you times that, so that gives us to zero point zero four seven. If you times that by hundreds. That will bring you obviously to 4.7. So 4.7 is um, the percent of the 85. That's right. Um, but that's not your win. That's not your win percent. No, that's not your win percent. Yeah, that's right. So f so four percent of 85 is 4.7. Yep. Is the bottom line. Um, yep. Away that one. Which is which is a different which is a different calculation and a different number that you need. But well, yeah, what, what Jeff's doing is the is the win percent. So you win loss. Uh, let's put that in. That's most important as well. So win loss ratio. Which you won't work out. Uh, well, you probably. I, I don't. I, I'm not good at formulas on Excel. I've got to tell you, but there will there'll be a way to do that, and it'll be that that minus that, hopefully, as a percentage over over 100, right? So that's what you're looking at. What's a good win? What's a good win percentage ratio to be consistent? Uh, you can have a 40% win-loss ratio and still make money, Fed. It depends entirely on, on what these things are doing. And, these, yeah. and uh, this thing here. So it depends on how you trade, basically. So if you're trading trend, for instance, uh, and your win-loss ratio is 50%, let's say. And the 50% of the winning trades made an average of 3.1%, and the average of your losing trades 
was 1%, hey, happy days. And you could you can work that figure out, you know, as to what's appropriate. In my strategy on a 30-minute chart, if I don't hit 75% win-loss ratio, I'll lose money. So it depends entirely on how you trade, where you take your profits, et cetera, et cetera. And as you say, Jeff, that's that's the key number, and that, that you know that's the, the the key number is your you need to work out what your win loss ratio needs to be, and and um, and and what you don't you tend to win because most strategies will give you two hundred percent plus um, in the um, uh, the the the, um, the percent of that your your percentage return is for two hundred percent plus. But with this strategy, uh, you know, four percent plus um, might be might be adequate, you know, that, which is what Jeff's trying to work out. You know, this is why we yeah. do the beta test on it. Yeah, we don't know the answer to that question for this particular system, no. And that is exactly why this is here, so we can work. So, uh, it. Um, so when you when you do your strategy, and it's really important that every you know everybody's going to have their own strategy. And what I would suggest going forward, and maybe this is something that we can cover, start to cover in the US session. What I would suggest going forward is that people send us in their their journals, and we can have a look through them. You know, with a, with a strategy. Yeah, that you're trading because then we can. Yeah, well, you know, I think that if if anybody's um, anybody's serious about you know uh, becoming professional and and um and 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 they want us to analyze what they're doing then um then you know we can genuinely help you if you give us the information but if we don't have the information then all we're looking through is charts and that only tells us the picture a snapshot of the picture of of one day or one chart or one one um um one profitable or, or negative outcome so we need a <clears throat> we need a month and, that, and that's what i would suggest you know let's let's start sort of like doing this every week and we, we can maybe we have a journal section maybe if we have time at the end of each um thursday session or something if we have an extra we, we, we tag on an extra half an hour then we can all go through and, and update our journals together and then um and then you know we, we jeff and i are quite happy to to analyze them <clears throat> and um and we, and we do it we do it live on air so obviously everybody will have to be um yep. Hell yeah. every we have to be happy to uh to share it but um but that's that's how we're going to all progress you know is if is if we kind of analyze the the, the data properly um how do we send it? Well, let's uh, well, let's think about that as well. Actually, Jeffy, we'll have to think figure out how people can send stuff into us. I'm sure there's a way already, but um, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure there is. And do I know it? No, maybe maybe, a, maybe we need maybe we, we might need a um, a Skype group or something for this particular show. Oh, look, um, there's, yeah, there's probably a way we could just um, invite that particular person into the room, and yeah. they can share their chart. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, okay. That All right. Like way well, yeah, we, we might might be able to have guests on the Zoom show, might we? Because we can do things yeah. slightly differently on, on Zoom. So that's right. Um, so yeah, well, let let's say that then we'll we'll um we'll we'll book that in as as part of the um as part of the the US session. We'll we'll start to do the um we'll start to do a uh, um a, a chart and journal section for for somebody of the day, and then we'll, and we'll go through and, and we'll see you know, where we're progressing and where we can improve. Um, Faye, parallel lines in the chart, you mean this little tool up here? Equidistant channel? Is that the one you mean? That will give you parallel lines and you just click on it, go to the top, then you double click on it and drag the bottom down or up or wherever you want it to be. I hope that helps. Guys, um, I, I forgot to ask, and this is a, uh, a request from, from Paul Bottrell, who most of you would know, is the uh, CEO and co-founder of Actions to Wealth. He is um, he's doing up a, uh, a promo page for us, Ash and myself, uh, for this particular show. And what he has requested is if anybody would be so willing, uh, could they please provide comments on this show, whether they be good, bad or indifferent, uh, because he wants to analyse them and he'll probably use the ones that are good 
and I'm not sure what he's going to do with the ones that are bad, but uh, he would really, really appreciate it if anybody in the show would be willing to say something about the show uh, at this point in time. And if you could address that to um, learn to trade live and free uh, as a subject line, to contact at actions to wealth.com. So contact at actions to wealth.com would be wonderful if you could uh, supply him with that information uh, going forward. That would be great if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, John. That would be awesome, mate. Thank you. Um, what are we doing, Ash? Well, I think we're wrapping, mate. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be back in a few hours, won't we? Let's um, let's wrap up here and uh, and come back for the uh, the US session. See if there's any movement in the market then. Um, things are pretty sleepy, but if, you know what? If they're sleepy, then uh, let's do some more more on the journal, and uh, and we'll, we'll we'll discover some yeah, other okay. little bits and pieces on it. Um, we can do that. So, we'd, yeah, we'll discuss maybe the ways that uh, maybe some of you guys can set things out. I'll tell you what will be really useful is to know what strategy uh, people are uh, are, um, are trading because if we get a uh, majority of people like trading uh, the daily wave rider or, or the slingshots or, or whatever else it is. Then, uh, then that would help us um, start to think about what the Daily Wave Rider Journal could look like or, or Slingshot uh, could look like. So uh, prepare that for, uh, for, for, la for later on. Um, and we will be back for, for then. Uh, the, the, the trade line, no, the, the range lines, that um, those that you trade off. Oh, okay. So the, yeah, so the trend lines. I'll tell you what, the, the trade lines. Okay. I'll tell you what, we'll deal with that as well, Faye. Um, in the uh, in the US session, we'll, we'll, uh, Jeff will discuss uh, how he draws his trade lines because they're different to a trend line. So he can discuss. Oh, that. okay. I'll see. What you mean. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Too easy. Great. Hopefully. All right. Amazing. Uh, but good to know, John. Good to know. We're, we're, we're always uh, happy to do that for people too. Uh, didn't mean, did I mention the dollar yen trade that we got into last week as well? That was on Thursday we got into that. Hope you guys are in that one as well um nothing to do here guys this could well be on its way for a nice little trade as well i i see this as being a uh, a lower high on the top of this channel that we've been in for the longest time and we've already had very very recent action top to bottom bottom to top and now that nice little lower high really does fill me with a, <clears throat> a bit of joy and if we can take out this low I think we're well on the way to uh, another good trade. We'll update that one uh, again in the US session, which is only hours away. Brilliant. Okay, mate. Well, we'll be back. Uh, we need something for this. Uh, we two do. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> two o'clock. Two o'clock. Oh, gee, I could say a lot to that, but I better not. <laughs> we will get ticked <laughs> off YouTube. <laughs> I'll think of something for later. Guys, uh, oh, thanks amazing. for your company, and we'll catch you in the US session at um, two o'clock UK. See ya. See you guys.